Hello and welcome to another week of Talk of the Town. You can hear Treaders' dogs barking in the background. It's a very good afternoon to the Port Adelaide Premiership champion, Warren Treadray. Hey, we're keeping it real here, boys. I got the plumber. He was doing a wonderful job, but my dogs don't like visitors. So you boys do not come to Adelaide. I know the borders are shut, but we don't want you anyway. <laughs> yeah, we don't have much chance of getting in at the moment. The Chief Football Reporter for the Nine Network, Sam McClure. Hello. Hello, Sam. Has Trent just got out of prison? It looks like a bit of a jumpsuit sort of setup that I'm looking at. <laughs> that, if that is not a mugshot that I'm looking at of Warren Treadray, then... Uh, well, well, just because you're late and you did your hair, I wouldn't be gobbing off to anyone. But no, it's not a mugshot. I'm actually hiding in my bedroom. It's school holidays here in Adelaide and I've got two kids who want my time. That's what happens in parenting, I guess. I look forward to that discovery. Now, let's talk about the grand final. Biggest game of the year. It's unlikely to happen in Melbourne because of the terrible COVID-19 rates that we're currently seeing in Victoria. Been a lot of chat about the Optus Stadium in Perth and the Adelaide Oval, but Treaders, a, a late entrant by New South Wales, ANZ Stadium now gaining momentum. Could it possibly be there? Well, it could be there, and if the AFL wants it to be there, it can be there. Let's, at the moment, as it stands, the grand final is in serious jeopardy in Melbourne, but that is a fair way away. Let's face it, what, three months, four months at least? So time is going to be of essence for them to make the decision, but they've got that on their side, which is a good thing, because as we've seen with Victoria, lockdowns, all the clubs, interstate. So I think it's an option. I think it's a real option. It's the biggest stadium outside the MCG, but also a non-footy state. So you would get better coverage, I suggest. You'd also get more interest. Would you sell it out? I'm not so sure. But in the feasible options elsewhere, you sit there and go, I'm sure Queensland want to play because they've played by the rules with uh, hosting teams in hubs. Western Australia are doing the same thing. They'd love to have it at Optus and hold 60,000 people and they would fill it out. And then yesterday, uh, Corey Wingard, who is the uh, Minister for Sport here in South Australia, pretty much put his hand up and said, we'll host it. But I think Adelaide's the unlikely option because of 53,000 fans can only get into Adelaide Oval. I think it comes down to one thing and one thing only, money. Sam, how close would we be to having a Sydney AFL Grand Final? Oh, I think it's it's definitely a viable opportunity, as we've seen in discussions over the last 24 to 48 hours. But Seven Treaders, not to put a dampener on this conversation, but am I the only one here that, that couldn't care less where the Grand Final is at? I mean, I just feel oh. like... And maybe maybe it's because, we, you know, the lockdown's starting to, to get to me. What are we, uh, 12 hours back into it? But I, I just feel like we're going to be so lucky to finish this season. If we get to the end of the year and we have a 17-game season and we have a final series, we have a grand final, I think we should all count our blessings, to be honest. I mean, I understand that people, you know, it's a sexy topic to talk about, you know, where's the grand final going to be? But if it was at a park, if it was on the moon, you know, like if we get a game, it's going to be unbelievable. I mean, I'm kind of um, just basically telling myself that I'm not going to be there because it's unlikely to be in Victoria. And if it is, there's going to be no crowds. Um, I think I think Treaders is right. That the place where we can get the most fans, um, it's just going to be such a special experience for those who are, are able to go. But yeah, with every day and every week that goes on, guys, I'm just starting to get more concerned about the season and how much we're going to have of one. If you can tell me right now, Seb, that we guaranteed a grand final, well, haven't we done an amazing job? Yeah, it's a pretty unpredictable landscape at the moment. Guys, let's talk a little bit about a bit of war of words between the coaches. Alistair Clarkson a fortnight ago after a narrow win over North Melbourne. I put the torch on the umpires in the AFL and said that not enough tackles were being rewarded with holding the ball free kicks. His fellow premiership coach Luke Beveridge hit back today and said, look, Clarkson is the statesman. He's allowed to have an opinion. But in Bevo's opinion, the AFL flinched and perhaps listened to Clarko a bit too much. What do you make of this, Sam? Yeah, I think he's right to a degree, Luke Beveridge. Um, I don't like when the AFL has knee-jerk reactions to what coaches say. Uh, what, what I will say um, is that, that it's not a new holding the ball interpretation. You know, like we get, and Treaders, you probably get these in Adelaide as well. You know, you get the, um, the yearly sit-down meetings with the umpiring department to talk you through, you know, these are the rules. This is what we'll be looking at. Sometimes we're concentrating more on these things. Um, but, you know, you're allowed to get a decision of holding the ball without prior opportunity if you're not attempting to get rid of it. It's just that I I don't like the fact that the the blowtorch was turned on it for a week and now we're all starting to look at it and now it almost becomes a a new interpretation. The rules in our game get meddled with 
far too much treaders in my opinion. Absolutely agree with you. I'd love no change. I'd love a situation where we can actually go, let's revisit next year. Now, the one thing I'd like to see only this year is if we can get to that final series, we return to full matches. So it is even in terms of time. I'd love to see that extra six minutes a quarter to really separate the difference between the real good and the, the, on the, the verge of the finals, if you know what I mean. Because at the moment, I think games are so close because there is less gap between uh, ability to break open a match. But I agree with you. There's no doubt, Alastair Clarkson, and as you would be if you're a full-time premiership coach, you'd manip- manipulate the situations. I wrote a column um, on a website I write for uh, recently saying coaches are there to manipulate what's best for their outcome. He felt that was the case to help him help the game and, more importantly, help the Hawthorne Football Club. Luke Beveridge fights back because he goes, hey, he's not necessarily saying it's the right or wrong decision, but we don't want to see uh, City Hall, who make and enforce our, and in, uh, enforce the matches and the rules and the whole lot, the governing body being manipulated by anyone. It, I think he's right. I think dead set, they have waited to the expectation. But also, too, maybe they've had that thought that it slipped themselves and it gave them the excuse to do it. We don't know. But realistically, senior coaches should be listened to. But that's why the AFL there is there and Steve Hocking is there and the umpires are there to act independently to make decisions what is best for the game. No different to the grand final. Hey, where should it be played? It should be played what's best for the game and financially yep. what's best for the game for the grand final. But the rules, I think they need to govern it independently and actually not sit there and change it too much. And I'm interested to hear and see what Kevin Bartler, who used to be on the rules committee, to uphold the standards of the AFL uh, game. And as I say, people call for 16 aside. No, 18 aside is the game. And let's just continue yep. to let it go. Treaders, can I just ask you, when you sit back as a former grade of the game, when you sit back on the couch and watch games on the weekend, do you watch a different game to the one that you played? I do to a certain extent now because there's less fatigue for players under particularly this year. But the latter three years of my career, we played heavy press. We played not about one key forward. It was about four. It was defensive pressure, all that. It is a manic game, and I love the game the way it is now because as much as some people hate it, might be six goals versus five goals, we're seeing the tough tackle brought in, we're seeing the hits, we're seeing the recovery, we're seeing all those things. Admittedly, I'd love to see more goals, but I think particularly if we want to say it's broken this year, I think it's broken off the back of limited game time, and we all know why the AFL did it, to try and squeeze their season in. And I think right now we're being confronted with the situation the next month, month and a half, they might have to be turning around playing a game every... What, three games every 12, 14 days, something like that. So I think that the cutting game time has been the bigger change we've seen because how often we've seen a team who is battling on the outside of the eight, hanging in for about 25 minutes of a quarter, then get blown away. I think that's the difference at the moment, that the pressure to ex- execute skills under pressure late in quarters isn't being put on the players, hence why the game's are closer and probably less scoring. Well, I don't mind Clarko throwing a bit of weight around and I like it when Treaders weighs in as well. <laughs> we have put together a heavyweight offering as far as AFL football goes on the Nine Network this year. And if you haven't caught up with all the new shows, take a look at this. The AFL is in full swing. Dangerous, strides in, kicks his second this shot. And footy on nine has got you covered. I've got my notes, we're ready to go. From the best analysis and opinions from the legends of the game. There is no way to excuse his behaviour. So he needs some strong support around him. I think you have to appeal. See your favourite players like you've never seen them before. Did you play with Lee Matthews? <laughs> <laughs> and we uncover some of the greatest untold stories throughout the game's history. Did you say it? So for wall-to-wall coverage of the greatest game on earth, head to www.os.com.au now. And one of the big additions to the Nine Network, of course, Sam McClure, who went bang in the Sunday Age this week with a deep dive investigation into the infamous Adelaide camp. Sam, I'll hold your fire for a sec. Treaders, how did this go down in South Australia? Did we have to mention it again? (laughs) The article did enough damage on the weekend. Congratulations, Sam, for blowing more Adelaide football club legs off because I'll tell you what (laughs) your name don't cross the border I know you can't but don't even think about it and if you do don't come to my house I want my family to remain safe but what I will say it was it really did open up a lot of eyes and I do hear of other stories that probably can't be printed for various legal reasons which says that it hasn't been great at all it's been terrible Mm. but the situation here is there's on the other side of it is the fans are unhappy but also the Crows fans actually got fatigued 
So I think now that that comes out, the next time we'll hear about it is in someone's book. It's great that the insight was given and, and full kudos to you. It was a brilliant column. It was brilliant insight. And the naysayers will always say they didn't put names to quotes. Well, anyone knows for a fact that a player who's still in the AFL system at the club or at a rival club is not going to put their name to a quote because they don't want the retribution that's going to come that way. But it is terrible to read. It is unbelievable to read. And it should never be a situation where players are exposed to that anytime soon. Okay, I'm back. Slightly different background. Had iPad issues, but we're right back into it. And Sam, we were just talking about how your piece on the Adelaide camp gave a few players the opportunity to, I guess, air their grievances at what went wrong that weekend. Yeah, and ultimately, that's what the piece was about, Seb. You know, it was, a, it was a piece for the players. They wanted to speak. A lot of them wanted the story to be told about what happened to them. Um, and I understand it was poor timing. And I understand Treasure's point that, you know, Adelaide want to move on and the fans want to move on. Completely understand that. And I hope they can move on now. But the piece had to be written because the story had to be told at some point. If they'd been more open about it at the time, they wouldn't be in this position. I stand by that. So, Sam, is it fair to say you left out some really juicy stuff? Um, oh, yeah, That's I don't like move talking on. about Move on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's stuff that I, I couldn't write. Yep. All right. yeah. Social Club, it is time to celebrate social media. And I'm not sure if this is one to celebrate or scratch your head. It's Brody Meyercheck. And Max Lynch from Collingwood. What is going on, Sam? I'll get you to explain this. <laughs> I have no idea. Well, Take a yeah. look at it now. <laughs> what? What's going on? Chockey's on the floor. What the yes. fuck? Come on. Come on. Ah! Oi! Hubs are for the boys. Yeah, no, no clue. I mean, it was it was weirdly funny, but I also don't know what was happening. Um, maybe said that they are going a little bit stir crazy in the hubs, as you can imagine, by the way. And and they haven't been there long either. No. And you know the worst thing about that? It was all set up. That's the worst thing about it. They've actually <laughs> thought their way through and that's the best they could come back with. And I'll give it up, boys. I've been out of the game 10 years. When I retired, Twitter's only hitting the, hitting the area. There was no Snapchat. There was no Instagram. There's none of that. That's what they're doing. Don't worry, people. It's not alarming. That's just normal. They're weird. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Time to talk certainties for the weekend. If we have a look at the leaderboard. Thank you very much. Still at the top, but... Uh, the lead is being trimmed. Treaders, who's your certainty for this weekend? Eagles over the Crows. I've got to stop asking you to name yeah. yours first. You should take the easiest Unbelievable. one. Unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> My certainty of the weekend is the Western, Western Bulldogs. Bulldogs to beat Carlton. Oh! Yes. oh. Okay. <laughs> and wow. Now, he's done it. It does. Hey, I, I can I can take my heart out of tipping, Warren. I'm like you. Will, will our next man, will he pick North over Essendon? I was going to go <laughs> for the Giants. But, Sam, before we go, you've been p p picking up a piece of pottery uh, all program. Is this this coffee machine that uh, that uh, you've been showing off all over social media? Uh, yeah, I make myself a coffee each and every day. This is my little uh, it's my cup. My machine's over there. My... Uh, my kitchen's a bit messy at the moment and uh, I'm literally working opposite my partner, Nisha. So I think if I showed everyone the kitchen, she wouldn't be happy. I'll, I'll, I'll Does clean she want it. to say hello? Yeah, Nisha, you want to say hello? No, no, she, she does not. I think if I, the if I turn Just the turn camera the around. Computer around. Turn it around. No, no. Watch her run. No, no. Watch you her run. She's quick. quick as birds, Sam. Yeah. At the very least, we can meet your beautiful partner. No, nah, I think, no, nah, I'd, I'd pay for that later, I think. Oh, look at I'm getting, I'm getting oh, a very st strong reaction, no. <laughs> All you right, well, like Premiership champion Warren Treadway, thank you for your time. And that's the end of the Crows camp, no more. None, it's over. Is that okay, Chief Football Reporter for the Nine Network, Sam McClure? Yeah, I'll agree never to talk about the Adelaide camp again if Tread is, uh, agrees to take a mugshot exactly where he is because uh, we put that up on social media, that would be scary. Have you ever I'll been to this? I'm bed. No, I haven't, but I'm sitting in my bed and it looks like I have. And I haven't made my bed. <laughs> yeah. you want me to, oh, but we're not in the rooms of showing. See you next week. <laughs> See you next week. <laughs>